can talk about everyone's favorite custom album, because you can, right? <laughs> All right, go for it. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, I, my English is not good. I will say I do my best today, uh, today okay? <coughs> okay, hi everyone. My name is Han Jun-sung, and I am a PhD student from KAIST in South Korea. Uh, my, my, <coughs> my research is a super fast parallel disease scan algorithm based on random partially. Okay, this is uh, the outline of my presentation. Let's go to the first section, the background and challenges. As you know, DBSCAN clustering is one of the most widely used clustering algorithms, right? Uh, the main benefit is to capture the arbitrary shape of cluster, and it does not require the number of clusters in advance. So uh, the key idea is very simple. It initially finds the dense regions by using the concept of core point, as, as in the figure A, right? Here, if the number of epsilon neighboring point is larger than or equal to the mean point, which is the user parameter, here is 4, then we call the, the point P as a core point, right? And this means this region is very dense. And then <coughs> uh, DBS can expand such dense regions in order to form clusters uh, according to the density each relationship. Uh, Here is if the point P is core point and the point Q is an epsilon neighbor, neighbor point of the point P, then the point Q is directly density reachable from the point P, right? And if this relationship is repeated multiple times like point P and O, uh, we call this relationship as just dense reachable, and all, all this kind of point belong to the same cluster. However, <coughs> uh, however, due to the high computation complexity and the limited resources of a single machine, it is unlikely that a single machine supports a typical size of count big data. So these days, distributed processing such as Hadoop and Spark has been adapted to increase the usability of this scan. The below figures is the common procedures of uh, parallel processing of DBSCAN. In first phase, the data set is divided into multiple workers. And in second phase, all workers try to process each partition. And last phase, all, all the results obtained from each worker are merged into one to produce the final result. So now let's talk about the existing parallel DBSCAN algorithm. However, due to the lack of time, uh, today, I, fo I, 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 fo I focus on the uh, partitioning phase because it is the most critical bottleneck in parallel processing. Uh, because due to the common belief in partitioning, the common belief is that the neighboring point must be assigned it into the, into the same, same partition because to calculate the correct density of the neighborhood. In other words, the number of neighboring points of the given point, right? More specifically, uh, <coughs> Uh, most of existing algorithms adopted the region-based partitioning. Uh, as you can see the below figures, uh, the data space is divided into multiple workers. However, here there are, there are two characteristics. The, characteristic, the first characteristic is the device space must be contiguous, which means the neighboring point must be located into the same partition to count the correct number of excellent neighbor point. And the second characteristic is uh, the, most, the divided space must be contiguous, uh, not contiguous, overlapping regions, uh, which means uh, all, the, all data points in overlapping regions must be duplicated into adjusted partitions, right? It means all the points in the regions must be, uh, 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 this is required for merging the local regions obtained from each partition. So as you may have noticed, there are three limitations in here. Oh, yes, here. Uh, as you can see, there are too many choices to cut the data space, right? And uh, the, the cost for partitioning increased as the number of dimensions also increase, increased. So this means the, the region-based partitioning is so expensive, right? And the second limitation is the, the load imbalance between data partitioning. Uh, as you can see in the middle figures, uh, the number and distribution of data points between partitions can be significantly different, right? This is very important because uh, look at the right most figures, here's all worker must wait, the slowest workers, uh, before merging. This is synchronization problem. <coughs> and the final limitation is uh, duplicated point in overlapping regions. As I said before, all the point in such regions must be duplicated. So as you can see in figure A, the total number of points in data set is 27. However, after region-based partitioning, the total number of data points increased to 14. 
40, right? right? Uh, obviously, <coughs> as the number of data points increased, then the total execution time also increased. So our approach is this. Uh, think about that. What if we use random partitioning in partitioning phase? This random partitioning naturally solves the previous limitations because this partitioning is very cheap. And obviously, all partitions have almost the same number and distribution of data points, uh, as, as, as you can see in figure B, right? And uh, all partitions can be disjoint with each other, so there is no overlapping regions and there is no duplicate point. Uh, however, the, the challenge when we are using the random partitioning is it is impossible to calculate the correct density of epsilon neighborhood. Right? As you can see in below figures, uh, some neighboring point of the, of, of the point P uh, cannot be distributed into other partitions. Here, in this situation, we cannot correctly, uh, correctly calculate the epsilon neighbor. So our, challenge, our solution is to estimate the number of points in other partitions uh, using the complex summary. Uh, the complex summary has the information about how many points are located in a small certain area as the number. So here uh, we can approximately count the number of points of the given point P, right? So these are our contributions. Uh, we propose the random partitioning method to solve the previous limitations. And second, we designed a highly complex summary of the entire data set to enable the approximate density calculation on a random partition. Okay, let's talk about the overview of our algorithm. Okay, uh, our algorithm consists of three phases. Uh, this is the common procedure of parallel processing. Uh, in phase one, uh, in data partition, based on random partitioning, and the second phase is local clustering to find all directly dense reachable relationships between data points. And, <coughs> and so phase third is merging to merge the, or merge the all result obtained from each partition. Uh, uh, let's talk about one by one. Uh, in data partition phase, look at the figure A. Our algorithm regards the data set as a set of cells with diagonal length epsilon. And then uh, as in figure B, our algorithm randomly distributes uh, the cells instead of point into multiple workers. Uh, so the yellow cells are assigned it to partition one and the uh, green cells are assigned it into worker two, right? Uh, here's uh, obviously our partitioning is not true random partitioning, right? However, uh, the epsilon value of db scan is considerably smaller than the length of the whole domain space. So uh, this, this partitioning method can achieve the similar effect of true random partitioning. In addition, by setting the epsilon value as the length of the di uh, diagonal length of the cell, uh, we can utilize the nice property of the proximity in a cell. Look at the uh, right, uh, upper right images. Uh, if at least one core point exists in a cell, then uh, all the points in the cell belong to the same cluster because due to the epsilon diagonal length, all the points in the cell are directly dense reachable from the core point P, right? This is very nice property. Uh, please remember this is very useful in phase two. Anyway, uh, next our algorithm builds a highly complex summary as in figure C. In this phase, uh, we produce the user parameter low and we adopt the concept of subset. Uh, with diagonal length uh, uh, low multiply epsilon. Uh, this means uh, as the value of low gets smaller, the space can be summarized more precisely due to the smaller size of subset. So next phase is local clustering. In this phase, remember that uh, the global summary structure was uh, broadcasted into all workers. So here we can approximately calculate the correct density so our algorithm tries to find all directly density reachable relationships between all data points. However, here, due to the property of the proximity in a cell, uh, this, this procedure is equivalent to find all directly reachable relationships that appears across two cells, uh, as in figure B. So this procedure is very simple. And our final phase is merging. So in, in this phase, uh, all results obtained from each partition are merged into one, as in figure A, and then as in figure B, our all, all, all data points are assigned into proper clusters. And the rest of points, uh, which are not assigned yet, uh, are regarded as uh, the outlier. Okay, let's talk about the experiment result. Uh, in, uh, in experiment, we uh, compare our algorithm with four existing parallel DBSCAN algorithms. 
the first two algorithms, evenly split partition and cost-based partition DB scan, uh, try to make the number and distribution of data point uh, <coughs> to be similar between partition. And the third algorithm is uh, reduced boundary, boundary partition DB scan focused on minimizing the number of overlapping regions, in, uh, the number of points in overlapping regions. And NGDB scan adopted, adopted the vertex centric approaches, and RPDB scan is our algorithm. And we also use four real world data set with varying dimensionality from 2 to 13 and varying size from 100 of megabyte to 100 of gigabyte. Uh, and here, especially GeoLife is heavily skewed data set. And there are three algorithm parameters regarding epsilon. Epsilon is very important parameter in DB scan algorithm. So here, we empirically found uh, that generated around 10 clusters in each, part, in each data set and used one eighth, one fourth, one half, and one of the value in experiment. And we set the mean points and low to be constant 100 and 0 0.01 respectively. <coughs> and all experiments were conducted on 12 Microsoft Azure instances, each of which has 28 giga RAM and four core and 20, 200, of, uh, 200 of SSD. And 10 instances were used as master, uh, worker node, and two instances were used as master node. Okay. This is the result of our the efficiency result of uh, uh, five parallel DB scan algorithms. As you can see, the red line is the result of our algorithm. In here, uh, our algorithm was always the fastest one. And especially in heavily skewed data set, our algorithm outperformed the state of the art by up to 180 times. And here's only our algorithm finishes for the largest data set with 100 of gigabyte uh, in figure D. Uh, then let's talk about where the performance comes, comes from, right? Uh, the first reason is load imbalance. This is the figures of five parallel DB scan algorithms. Uh, as you can see, the load imbalance of our algorithm was always close to one, which means uh, the perfect load, imbalance, uh, load balance between their partitions. And however, existing algorithms fail to balance the load because uh, look at the figure A, this is heavily skewed data set. Uh, in this case, the load imbalance of existing work uh, was up to 600. And the second reason of performance win is total number of points processed in uh, the algorithms. In here, uh, the total number of points processed by our algorithm was uh, always same to that of the original data set. So <coughs> So uh, this means we use random partitioning, so there is no duplicate points, right? So however, uh, the total number of points in existing algorithm uh, increased the value uh, as the value of epsilon increased. Okay, this is the accuracy result of our algorithm. Uh, we use land index to measure the accuracy of the algorithm. Land index is very popular to compare uh, the accuracy between two algorithms. The baseline algorithm is the eject db scan algorithm. So here's the, uh, low, uh, when the value of low was 0 0.01, the land index one, which means uh, the result of our algorithm was exactly the same to that, the same to the that of exact DB scan. And the below figure is the visualization of our result. It looks nice. And the final experiment is the size of summary. The size of summary is very important because it is highly related to the overhead to broadcasting or data loading. So in this experiment, the size, of all, uh, the size was only 0.04% to 5.2% uh, of the data set. It means our summary was very compact. Uh, let's make a conclusion. Uh, region-based partitioning in existing, existing algorithms induced a critical bottleneck. So we proposed a random partitioning method and highly a compact summary of the entire data set. So mm -hmm. RPDBs can achieve, achieve almost the perfect load, in, load balance and does not duplicate points. As a result, our algorithm dramatically outperformed uh, the state of the art by up to 108 times uh, without much loss of accuracy. Okay, uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Uh, how do I extend my work? Yeah, so like, what is something you wish you had time to add in this algorithm? Yeah. 
that you didn't put in the paper? Like, what's, what's the future work? Uh, my future work. Uh, you made it so perfect, you don't have anything you want to do. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's an acceptable yeah. answer. Uh, I, uh, I like those. My algorithm uh, should be upgraded because uh, if so you say, say it again, sorry, my, my algorithm can be improved if the if we consider the dynamic epsilon value. Okay. Okay. So uh, my future work is uh, to consider the dynamic epsilon value. So as, as you know, the optics algorithm, like. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> All right. His English was perfect, right? It was yeah. a round of applause. Thank you so much.